virus that causes coronavirus disease is spreading in some of our communities. This disease, also known as COVID-19, is thought to spread mainly from person to person through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can spread to the mouth, nose, or hands of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Take steps to lower your risk of getting sick. Here are some things you should do. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. You can also use hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Take extra measures to put distance between yourself and others. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home if you're sick, except to get medical care. If you have severe symptoms, please call 911. Cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue or the inside of your elbow. Only wear a face mask if you're sick and around other people, or if you need to take care of someone who is sick. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces. Older adults and people who have severe chronic medical conditions, like heart or lung disease, or diabetes, are at higher risk for more serious illness from COVID-19. This group should consult with their healthcare provider about additional steps to stay protected. For more information on COVID-19, please visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Let's work together to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities. The GoMD group, uh, Dr. Artemanov sent me a workup document from Harvard Medical School Mass General, and they showed very interestingly a, a, a nice little box that said risk stratification. Yeah. So they recognize, and every every hospital person in, in ICU recognizes that some people are beyond hope, and some people are don't need immediate care, and everywhere in between. So you risk stratify them so you can triage them properly. So, yep. but shouldn't what Mass General is doing for COVID-19 risk stratification be available widely to the population and not just the people coming in with the disease so we can risk stratify them ahead of time and well, help yeah. ameliorate that, you know? Yeah, preventing is a lot easier than treating. And that's probably my favorite part about what's happening with this, you know, obviously massive changes that are happening in every facet of life right monetarily health home life is the awakening of like hey we've got to do something drastically different so the wake up call it's 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 a good thing and it's never easy to change but it has to happen so you know i had an epiphany and i'm an mit guy so some people think i'm smart no i'm just a hard worker but i had an epiphany (laughs) i should have had a long time ago and it's so simple why are drugs like metformin, I'll use these fingers, metformin, statins, and blood pressure, blood pressure drugs so pervasive in our society? And the answer I won't, the answer is because that's the narrow band of testing we're doing. We measure your blood pressure, so we give you a blood pressure medication. We measure your A1C, so we give you metformin or insulin, and we measure your lipid profile, so we give you a statin drug. But that's all we're measuring, so that's the little box we're living in. We have to yeah. expand that box to yep. causation. And when you expand the box, you're going to get different treatments because you're going to find different things. It's that simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. It requires no genius. And then you realize the CDC says 90% of healthcare costs, therefore morbidity, mortality, is chronic. And you can argue that a lipid measurement is a chronic measurement and A1C is a chronic measurement. But the data I have shows that it really isn't. Like for example, you can have two patients with the same A1C of eight, but their glucose profiles are very different. So it's not really the right, it's not really the right measure and it's insulin resistant. So we should be measuring, guess what? Fasting insulin, not A1C. In my program, I have a little metaphor for people. Let's just say, we're going to have a financial transaction in 31 days. And I can either have a million dollars set aside for you, or I can just give you one penny today and keep doubling the number of pennies I give you every day for 31 days. At the end of 31 days, you have 
$10.5 million, $10.7 million. So if you have the $5 million disease, does this $1 million immediate cure solve your problem? No. And the metaphor about the pennies is when I give you that first penny, you're underwhelmed. But that's removing the first risk. Yeah. And I remove another risk. And I, I get a doubling effect. And I keep getting this doubling effect. And then all of a sudden, boom, I get this huge benefit to health. So everybody who's out there, all the pundits talking about this, want that million-dollar quick cure. And they they'd be smart. They marginalize something like, like you know, putting something uh, antioxidant or oxidate oxidizing in this case against the virus up your nostrils. Let's just, let's just say it has an imperceptible one percent effect. That's like the penny. And then I do something else: vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. Yeah. And I keep working, and I improve my diet. I reduce my sugars. I do a little intermittent fasting. Eventually, you're going to get to a state of no health conditions compared to the cardiovascular curve, and you're reducing your risk of dying from this disease by 95%. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what we're doing. And it's so like, yeah, it's hard to show the isolation of one thing, not so much with vitamin C, because I think it's pretty profound, but some of these other things, it may be hard to isolate them. But we are, we are a symphony. This is my other metaphor. I love it, and I like the music you're playing. We physiologically, <laughs> that's adorable. We physiologically are a symphony, not a flutophone. Okay, yep. so when, when the symphony is warming up and everybody's doing the wind is doing this, the string's doing that, it sounds very discordant. But when the conductor brings it all together, it's beautiful. And that's yeah. how we have to look upon health, not this single, solo, mono, savior therapy that's just going to knock out that one virus with that sucker punch yes. and that's it. It, it that is for the naive and for the herd mentality not for not for people that are really interested in being healthy you're you're an uber doctor who really thank crossed, you across many channels of, of health and i think you can be a, an amazing spokesperson for the next phase of medicine that has to come to, come out of this and me as a scientist all I want to do is support your your busy clinical work with the science behind some of the stuff that you're already doing so that we can create a new set of evidence. That's my goal. Evidence-based <laughs> medicine for chronic disease. Yeah. You're giving me chills. I love it. It sounds good. I love your music. Keep playing it. All right, my dear. Great chat. Take care. With you. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. You too. Bye now.